What's up guys, thanks for coming back. Today we're gonna to be working on the spindle and the spindle wiring and hooking it up to the inverter and doing the power cord to the inverter. I'm gonna be explaining some of those things and some precautions that you wanna take and how to wire it up and make it as easy as possible. The actual inverter to the control box wiring, we'll be doing that portion whenever we set the machine up in its final location. Again, I'm doing the uh, GoPro fund so that I can get better shots for you guys close up on the little detail stuff that I do, that you get the same sight that I do, right in front, better angles, because right now the camera that I have is just a little bit too bulky. If you're able to contribute a dollar, if it's a $5, it'd be anything you can, it'd be much appreciated, and every little bit helps. If not, no big deal. Enjoy the videos, and I hope it helps. You got any questions, comments, or concerns, just leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to them as soon as possible. All right guys, let's get going. Thanks. All right guys, we're gonna start working on this spindle and getting it wired up. Um, so you're gonna have your spindle here, it's a uh, Extremely heavy, so you need to be careful. Don't drop it on your toes or nothing. It'll break your foot. I guarantee it. Um, according to the instructions, this is your in on the left for the water. This is your out. I don't think it really matters, but that's what the directions say. So I have an arrow pointing in and an arrow pointing out. Now we have a... a plug here and it goes up here but now we don't need the spindle right now so I'm gonna put this thing down ah, over here so on this spindle wiring you have to wire the cable to the plug here now and you're also going to be putting it to this inverter so we have a bunch of various numbers, or I'm sorry, letters. They're both marked right here. And then down in there, you'll see the screw bases. Um, but it's also marked here. So I'm gonna use these because they're easier to see. Um, we got the R, S, T, P plus, P, R, and U, V, W. And then you have a ground right here. We're just going to be working with this first three and the last four. So the P plus and the PR we're not messing with right now. So the only real trick to this, it doesn't matter on your spindle wires here. It doesn't matter what color you use. However, the only thing that matters is that one equals U, two equals V, and three equals W, and four equals ground. This is what I have chosen to be the colors for these corresponding numbers and letters. So one going to be red, two is going to be blue, three is going to be yellow, and four is going to be green. That's how we're going to wire it here to the plug, and that's how we're going to wire it here to the inverter. Now working to the other side, the R, S, and T. R is your ground. S is your neutral, and T is your hot. So, it'd be like this. Green's ground, white is neutral, and black is hot. Now this thing, if you read the side here, it's pulling 20 amps 
And when you're thinking about this, this machine is going to be running for a long time. Sometimes unattended because it's going to take three, four, five, six hours to complete a project. So you're talking about this unit pulling 20 amps for a long amount of time, possibly unattended. I cannot express how important it is to make sure when you're choosing your power cable for this thing that you make sure that it is rated to be pulling 20 amps the entire time that it's going to be operational. 10 gauge is really the only gauge that you should be using for this to handle that 20 amps and not overheating and possibly becoming a fire hazard burning up while you're not in your shop or you're not in your room that you have set up for all this you don't want to be sitting there putting a project down overnight to be running and this get too hot and start a fire so one of the easiest ways to do this for us here in the states is to go to harbor freight there's a 25 foot long 10 gauge extension cord that's uh i believe it's 39 dollars and then if you always can use a 20 percent off coupon and you just use that and that'll give you everything that you need as far as safety wise it'll be able to hold the 20 amp current no problem and you'll have leftovers. Don't throw away your leftovers. Because sometime, somewhere in the future, this will come in handy. Just like if I had a 10 gauge extension cord that messed up 10 years ago, if it was still sitting on the shelf, I'd be using that right now. So make sure that you pay attention to the amps that you're going to be pulling and making sure that you don't ever underestimate uh, what power can do and the fires that it can cause and the danger that it can pose. So this is an area not to skimp in.
straightforward pretty easy once you know what goes to what and what letter goes to what number and the next thing we're going to be working on is going to be actually wiring up these controllers to the stepper motors and then also doing the drag chain the drag chain is a little bit tricky the some of the things that I've heard about the brackets sometimes they're not so good there's supposedly some 3d printable ones so we'll, we'll get into all that and we'll hash that out once we get there. But until next time guys, I'll see you later. And again, please hit that like and that subscribe. And don't forget the bell so that you get updated every time I put on a new episode. And if you don't mind, if there's anything you can do, please contribute to that GoPro fund, it'd be much appreciated. All right guys, talk to you later.